Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. And uh, his mom, you know, spoke to him about the wine. And Jesus said, now you know it, it's not my time yet. <laughs> right, right. But and yet he still, out of love for his mother, met the requirement. Right. Um, there, there's other times, you know, in, in the Old Testament. I mean, when when uh, Abraham, he prayed. <laughs> You know, he prayed for for his his uh, for for Lot. I, I think that we are growing as far as our communication with God is concerned, and we're seeing those degrees of growth. There was a time when he externally moved somebody, like if you want a, a horse to run faster, you spur it, or you can whisper in his ear. When he told Moses to speak to the rock, not to strike it, the first time Moses did something, he struck something, but the second time he said, just speak to it. So we are progressing to the point. Where we don't have to point, we don't have to kick, we don't have to spur. Only thing we got to do is speak. And when I say, and when we're talking to God anyway, He's He could have, of course, He's going to. It's His power to steer us any kind of way He wants to. But I think His desire is to be able to speak to us. He said, "Those who are led of the Spirit of God, my sheep know my voice, and another day will not follow." Have I done things and been led in a way that took some external force? Yeah. I mean, fame will send you in some directions you never want to go, or away from some directions you went. But then if you can just speak it in my in my mind, and then speak it to my heart, speak it to my spirit, then I can move without the pain. You, you see what I'm saying? Without the external influence. And I think that's where he's bringing us to, to a point where he can just say, Taylor, what? raise your hand. Okay, and then you raise your hand just because he says, so nothing outside of you, no, no fires, no, no threats, no nothing, but you just raise your hand. I think that's where he's bringing us to, but there's a different skill that we employ. Can says, I read you? Trust, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not to thine own understanding. Come on now. Acknowledge him, you will direct your path. Can I read two verses? Yeah. Can I read two verses? In particular, one, you want to see it? Well, I, I'll just yeah, read this read. first Samuel, first Samuel 15. It's going to be 18 and 19. First and the Lord, in the Lord, first Samuel 15, 18, 19. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and say it, go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. And then listen what the prophet told him. He said, wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil and did evil in the sight of the Lord. Uh, yeah. That's how God. That's how God looked upon him doing calling an audible. He called it. He did evil in the sight of the Lord. Go ahead, bitch. No, I want you to. This is a side note. I don't know if you guys ever pay attention to this, but throughout the Old Testament and even the New Testament, you see how important it is that God doesn't leave it up to you. He he, he said, "You have not obeyed the voice." Come on. Uh huh. Hey, Bishop, I, I want to throw something at y'all. And, and on this, for using, Brother Isaac, we're just using yours as an example, if you don't mind. With what the scripture y'all just used as well. What I saw, Jimmy, on the one that you gave, there's definitely a response back from God, whether he used himself or he used a prophet to chastise. Uh, Saul or brother uh, or bishop elder when 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 Moses he struck that rock struck that rock with his cane or with his staff there was definitely a response from God to Moses saying you will get a consequence for your audible your your response brother Addison you got only person who chastised you were you, was you. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm saying that, and Bishop asked this question, uh, I thought this out to the question, is it possible that God, and not not that not, it's not even possible, God knew what he was going to do. But what he did do was probably what God wanted done more than anything else. Because when those people 
Brother Addison went to get to pay their bill. Not that you know anything about it. A, they either say I got I receive a blessing, or B, it could have been they didn't have money to pay for it. And wow. God it. Wow. Wow. But, but, but you would never know. The thing of it is that God knew. That's and, the whole and, point and, I'm trying and, to say. And, and, and I think that the, the impact on them was a preset. Yes. Uh, if that makes sense. See, remember, we do all things to bring glory to the Lord, not right. to ourselves. Right. So if we're doing stuff, he's going to do it in such a manner that it's going to bring glory to him. If we it's follow the direction, yeah. somebody might say, boy, that guy sure was nice. Yeah. 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 Never, never mentioning God, period. So I would, how them glorifying Edison going to get them into the presence of God? Exactly. exactly. So it's like, I think when we do it his way, yeah. It draws attention to him, and it draws the focus, and people come to him. And and I think that's where the the, the, the for me that's where the error of the audible become. Uh, I can screw a thousand men with a jawbone, but was it me or was it the God working through me? Give him the glory I, for it. Yeah. If I don't give him the glory, if the opportunity never comes to say it is by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ that I'm able to accomplish this overwhelming feat, this great and magnificent work, then. People gonna say, man, that boy show is bad. He took a job on and killed off a thousand men. Forget that noise. I don't need no credit. I don't need I don't need nothing. Uh because how am I gonna get anybody in hell? I can't save my own soul. And, and, so what them being drawn to me gonna do? Right. And that's what I'm saying. I think sometimes some of the time we're led by mm. God is because God knew what Jim was gonna be at a certain place at a certain time. Let me let me say this. I he think I told you to be there. I personally think that's a very dangerous position. Which one? To to think that God told me specifically to do something. Uh-huh. And I did some else. I did something else. Okay. And then I try to say, well, God was still honored anyway. Uh wow. Uh, uh, and Jim, wow. And Jim, uh, Jim, that that want, blows my mind. And Jim, I wanna throw this back at you. I'm gonna throw this back at you. It's it's not for me saying. And, and Brother Asin did not say that God, that he did, he did exactly what God asked him to do. He didn't say that. I'm sitting there saying is the probability is that God still got what he wanted accomplished because with God, all things are possible anyway. I'm saying is that not for him to use his youth. God talked to him at the same time, saying, I told you go talk to those people. You didn't do that. However, I still believe <laughs> that still God got what he wanted to accomplish, whether Brother Addison did it or not. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying get Brother Addison as cute and say, hey, hallelujah, I did. I still accomplished what God told me to do. No, he did not. But you know what? He got feedback from his spirit, from the unction of his spirit, even up to this day, mm. that he learned something from it. So God but he, still got the glory out of the God. Spirit. God used that situation, don't get me wrong, to teach a lesson, so on and so forth. Yeah. But I still think that's very dangerous. I, I still think that's very dangerous to think that uh to think that uh wow, I think that's dangerous. Oh, well, that's dangerous. I, I to think me our, it is. our propensity is to think on our own. As a matter of fact, our right. normal state is that. When we were born into the earth, we're not taught to listen to the voice of God, even seek it. Not the God of, of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, anyway. So we already have that, that that habit established. We come here in enmity with God. We ain't even listening for his voice. If we continue to practice that, then we're going to operate in greater error. So the practice has to be, and I think his, his, his intent is to bring us to a place where we are sensitive to his voice and that we are more apt to follow it. We grow in our, our desire to follow God's voice. Or even to seek it, I can honestly say, and I said it with not without reservation, man, I spent a lot of time in Christendom and in studying the Bible, not listening to the Lord. I'm trying to figure this thing out. It took me a while to realize I didn't know what I was doing, and then I couldn't know what I was doing just by reading the Bible. It's like you're going to learn the English language and then talk to everybody, right? Hey, you, wait, you don't know what you're saying. I mean, you got to have a purpose behind it, so the program is loaded, but God still got to be speaking. If you just exactly. know the words, we talking about the Old Testament and the prayer of Jabez and, and, and increasing my, we taking the scripture to pervert them, sow it to this, sow this seed, your seed, what seed? That's a lie. And we, and we told it, we told that fornicating lie to a lot of people. 
And, yeah. and, and it's annoying because we did it out of ignorance. We really did it out of ignorance. Well, we were wrong as, as Hades to tell right. people stuff like that. We told them that. We had them following us and had them following scripture and had them so far away from God, they couldn't tell their left from their right. And some of us are just coming to the realization like, man, we didn't know what we're talking about. No, we didn't. Why? Because we weren't listening to God. Yeah. We read the book and we got, we think we got it figured. We sit down and write our sermons out. We got the three points and the main thing and we're going to go talk to the people. And the slightest idea what we were saying. <laughs> hey, bitch. Hey, hey, bitch. Hey, Alan, Alan, what I want to say, Jimmy, I want to make sure we definitely clean that misperception I was telling you was. I'm, I'm not saying that you should come up with an audible contrary to what God says and that that's okay. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying is God will, what God wants done will be done whether you do it or not. God will still make something happen. I'm saying in the in the case with, with Brother Addison, I still believe whether it's not to give him an excuse for anything, but to understand that God still made that still a blessing occurred concerning that. Because somebody give me a blessing, I'm always gonna say good praise God. Because I know I didn't do it, and somebody came out of nowhere. But it doesn't give him an excuse not to do what God tells him to do, nor any other believer to listen to this this uh, video or this, this live stream. What we're saying is, be sensitive to God, be led by God, but understand you are subject to do what you do with the audibles that we call. Can I ask you a question? How do we avoid that? How do we avoid falling off into the audible? How do we avoid, what practice do we put in place to hear the voice of God? What practice should we put in place to more, more I guess accurately discern the voice of God? Exactly. Obedience. What you said, Kevin? Obedience. Yeah. Well, but well, he said he was. How do you avoid being? How do you avoid being disobedient? Well, we're human beings, and we we're gonna fall off the bike sometimes. Don't get me wrong. We're not gonna live a perfect life. That's impossible. But we gotta. You gotta continue to. As we go, we learn. We do better. We learn. We do better. We should be perfecting. We should be closer and closer to the light as we go along. And and I think that's part of the journey that we're on. What did that look uh, like, though, Jimmy? What does that look like? And that the way it looks like if the next time you, you, you go in that little restaurant and he tell you to do something, then you don't just not do it and go pay. You go do what he said. So then he reminds you of things. He brings things back to your remembrance. He allows you to go into situations so you can see. And then the next time it occurs, you do better. Hey, Jimmy. Let me, let me tell you Jim, what it I, looks like. Let me explain what it looks like. It looks like this. If any man come after me, uh, by himself, come on, take up his cross daily and follow me. Yeah. Here's the problem. The only time God has a problem with you is when you ain't dead. Yeah. Hey, hey, yeah, that's true. Yeah, but see, as long as God got to argue with you and you <laughs> slap on the make audible, he going to have a problem. <laughs> but if you dead, and you realize that you ain't got no sense and you don't know what you're doing. Now you become trusting in God, right. to God, dependent upon God, looking to God, trusting in God. Now you you are afraid to make a move out of yourself. <laughs> so perfection and maturity is a very painful, sacrificial, crucifying reality. And the reason that God is having problem out of because we don't want to die. I, I agree. I, 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 Bishop, I still had something else that I thought would still be appropriate to answer uh Elder Johnson's uh, uh statement. Elder, this is this is something I thought I'd always been. Jimmy, see if you correct me wrong on this, but but brother uh Elder, could you read uh Philippians 4, verse 5 through 9? Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, be careful for nothing. But in everything I pray, and by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. That's first one, right? That's the mm -hmm. first thing you need to do. Go ahead. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. 
Now that that's the piece I'm saying is Jimmy is that that, that the peace of God rule in your heart because I think that's in another translation, right? The peace of God rule in your heart. Go ahead, read finish the rest of it, Elder. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. Uh oh, cut off. There we go. <laughs> Oh, uh, let me see. <laughs> Hold up. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Uh -huh. Those things which you have been learned, which you have both learned and received and hear, I mean, and heard and seen in me, do. And the God of peace shall be with you. And and, and I think that uh, uh, Brother Asher, we we came in there was the Jimmy. I was saying is the peace of God rule your heart, and it, it, it's part of that bishop. Because I see you said die self, right? And then I'm saying they're saying is that you gotta have that peace of God, Jimmy, on your audibles. And if you don't have peace from God, that's dictates. Whether you your audible is incorrect. Well, I think that uh, I think that uh, uh, it's going to be hard for you to have the peace of God if you study doing something different than what He told you to do. I don't think that peace is going to reign in your heart, and I don't think it should. And I'm going to say this: I think we're in a dangerous territory where we decide we decide what a blessing was. Okay, you say they paid paid for it, so they was that was a blessing to them. How you know that was a blessing to them? And how you don't know that's you, you, what I'm saying, but but that's but it doesn't matter. Your job is to do what God told you to do. But now, I, now outside of that, you're gonna say, Oh, but I still blessed him. Says no, who? Says I ain't who? saying that. But Jimmy, I'm trying to let you know, I'm gonna make sure I'm saying clean up. I'm not saying that. Okay, I, I want you to I want you to get that. I am not saying for him to to be off the hook for what he didn't do. I'm just telling you is regardless of what he did. Not for him to do it, can do it again either. Is understand that God still could have used the opportunity. Oh, of course, God can do whatever He wants to do. God can still get glory out of every situation. Oh yeah, yes. now, he he. I I believe God did get the glory because He taught me a valuable lesson. He taught, and you. that could have could have been yeah the 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 bottom line. What He wanted you to do thing could have that, been. that was supposed to happen. It could have been could have been teachable moment just for me yeah but could have been. To, it could have been right yeah. well it was a teachable it could moment have been you. the only thing but it was a teachable god did use it to show me yeah how he operated right and, 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 and it and it did it it did bless me at least to know uh the difference in hearing from God and acting on what God what he said to do, right? Or, and that's all I'm saying. So we're not taking giving this. I'm with you. I agree with you. We're not, I'm with you. I'm not trying to say. Well, I'm with you. Do that. Right. But let's not make that a practice or make it seem yeah. like that. Oh, no, no. Good idea which is why, which is why he said what he said. Exactly. Right. He said, I told you to go talk to him. Yeah. And I right. mean, just like that. Yeah. Because it, even though you learned to me something. Just like that. Because even though you learned something and you was blessed, did they get what God yeah. had planned for them to get? I'm, I'm pretty sure. And the they blessing didn't. that they supposed to have gotten. Yeah. Because I think that when you went and talked to him, well, we know one thing. God told him to go do something. If God told him to do it, he told him to go do it for a reason. And it wasn't yeah. just for Addison. It yeah. was for them as well, too. Yeah. So now did somebody else have to come back later yeah. and do for them what he had planned for you to do yeah. for them? You see Obviously, what I'm saying? It, it, I, it, I, I, I know that a lot of people died in the wilderness that should have made it to the promised land. Yeah. But because of their grumbling and unbelief, he let all of them die and let the next generation enter in. Yeah. So you say, well, that was a blessing because the next generation got to see that this generation was disobedient. And right. so they missed out. Well, we can say that, but for them, they should have went in. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and I, I'm just sitting there saying something. Yeah, I got you. set this up some kind of way. Like I said, there's always, where's another word I just gave? He came to my attention, Jim, was there's always a ram in the bush. That, you know, when we look at the, 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 the Jesus' practice of going out in the morning and, and talking to the Father, I always thought and initially that Jesus went out to get his marching orders for the day. But what I'm beginning to think about is that Jesus didn't get his marching orders for the day. He linked in. He linked in. He fine-tuned fine his radio. 
that his receiver, he was fine tuning the receiver out there. And as he went, he was getting instruction. He didn't go out there to get his marching orders. He went out there to get hooked up. And Thank so you. that's what, and, and so that's my, has been my problem again. I thought I was going out and give him a marching order for the day. I write my little list out and then I go do stuff and then didn't pray the rest of the day. Yeah, you, but, but you Elvin, Elvin, not be led of the Spirit of God. It's like saying the wind gonna blow me over here. But how can you be led of the Spirit of God not times. listening to God? <laughs> the word said, the word said, pray without ceasing. It also it says, says pray day without, and night. <laughs> yeah, without that's ceasing, word, never stop. Right. Well, I think that was that scripture when I was showing that, though, right? I'm saying is, God's. I'm gonna say, let the peace of God rule your heart. Is to, to if you're being sensitive to Him. You know you're going in the right direction, or you know you're going in the wrong direction. Unless you harden your heart, you want to be sensitive and allow the peace of God to rule your heart to determine, hey, Lord asked me to do it this. You know, here's a good example. It wasn't Saul, Paul, told not to go to South Asia or one of my Asia. He told not to go into Asia, right. And, and, and then he received a vision of somebody saying, come hither. Now, Bishop, that's a good example. Jimmy, you see the channel that too. Did, 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 did Paul operate under the will of God by going to Asia after he heard God said not to go to Asia? He didn't do that. Absolutely. Okay, that that's what you're saying then, right? Because the scripture never said that God chastised him for going. He didn't go there. Did he go down? He, he didn't go in Asia. Yes, he you did. Go back to chapter verse one and chapter thirteen. That's the Acts chapter thirteen. You got to go back to chapter one. Chapter the one. The only reason get there out there because the Spirit of God has told him separate Barnabas and Saul for the work where I choose. I send them. Right. Now, so he sends them to the mission field. Uh huh. M maybe they got out there and made an audible. <laughs> you think? Oh, God made an audible. <laughs> We're going to go over here to the It looks like, look like a good place to go. He said, no, no, no. Don't go over there. Put it up. Go over here. Right. Now, the other part I want to make is this. Listen, I don't believe I'm authorized to go up to the hospital this morning and just go to lay hands on people saying be, be healed. Yeah. I don't think so either. But I have the power. I got the power to do it. Before. I've gone up to the hospital. The bus bus, we thought, okay, go to the hospital. Pray for people. We go up there, and, and as a while, we realize this ain't working. <laughs> well, okay, uh -huh. most, the most come back home sick. Oh, shut up. Yeah, it's true. That, though we've been called to, listen, healing is a part of the work that God has called us to as witnesses. Mm -hmm. But we, listen, and we have the Spirit of God in us, but we do not control the Spirit of God. Uh-huh, right. 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 And, and Let me tell you something. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That control demands that you die to yourself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So See, listen, listen, the whole thing about a relationship with God hinges on oneness. And the old you can never be one with God in the spirit. You can't put all one. In New Orleans, again. Amen. Come on, come on. That God needs to be in a relationship with oneness with Him, so that there is. See, Jesus had very little noise on His line when it started coming down to hear what God was saying. Say that again. We, on the other hand, hear God by accident <laughs> because we don't understand. We don't understand. It's the new creature that has died to Himself has been raised up into oneness with Christ that is that has no intent to try to do anything out of himself. It is that creature that God can bring into oneness. Yes, sir. That creature can hear God and discern God. And he never he never gets out into that realm where we were of hitting and missing and, and saving the best for a sacrifice. That that man in Christ understand that that would never fly. Uh-huh. So all I'm saying is God is trying to bring us into this oneness with him. He understands that there has to be some varied and multiple, multifaceted experiences whereby we learn 
that you're not free to step outside. You don't have you're, enough you're knowledge not. and insight to, to decide to step outside because you don't know the consequences of moving apart from what God has told you. I, I think the severity of, uh, becomes, in some sense, it makes it seem that though we live a restricted life and that we can't have no pleasure. But the golf course is pleasurable for all of you. When did Jesus say, go play golf? I mean, he, he may he may lead you to go play golf, but at some point, it's going to be your own flesh that drives you to the golf course. No pun intended. There are some things that God had, there are some allowances that we have in this life that God does not even pleasure of having sex with the woman you're married to. You know what I'm saying? Or don't go have sex because it's a pleasurable thing. This life has a lot of pleasure in it. And I think aside from sin, we can experience that pleasure. When we die, I think we died to sin. Well, I know God didn't have pleasure in you saying that we shouldn't golf. Yeah, wow. I know, right? I know, right? <laughs> That's a sin. That's a sin. You shouldn't play golf. And marble not. But the reality of it is, this life is the place that come to them might have life and that they might have abundance. Abundant. I think those things that we do aside from the will of God, aside from the ordinance of God, is where death occurs. I mean, life is meant to be pleasurable. He is a, a creature pleasure. You said, for my good pleasure have I created you. So life has a, this experience that we're going through, even this one, has a tremendous amount of reward and fulfillment and pleasure. Yeah, but I, I, I want to... I, I don't want to see us there as being led, though. Pastor, hey. let me say something. Let me say something. Go ahead. Because I to show you I understand what you're saying. Now I know, trust me now, I feel like uh you can call an audible as a quarterback. You override the offensive coordinator and you called an audible. You may score a touchdown with your overriding in the audible you call. I'm not saying something good is not gonna come out of the fact that you called an audible. But let me tell you something though, but that's gonna embolden you. To now call begin to call audibles more often, and 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 now you got your own plan that doesn't fall in line with the scheme of the team and the offense that they put together. Right. And how, how long do you think you're gonna be the starting quarterback if you continue to override and call audibles? And your and your response is, well, every time I call one. Something beneficial happens out of it. Let's just say something does beneficial happen out of it every time. At some point, you still not gonna be the uh, you're not gonna be called, you're gonna be on the sideline, in my opinion. You better not get the boys. Take, take a look at the great article that Moses called on that mountain when he struck that rock. What happened to Moses as a result of it? God backed Moses and let the water come out of the rock. And, and what did. happened to Moses? <laughs> his audible worked, but what was the result of his audible? He, 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 he didn't enter in. He never entered into the promise. He, never, he, he got a chance to see it, but he didn't talk. enter in. But he exactly did, right. He did talk to him, though. He did talk to him. Bishop, back to this one again. If you tell me, is what this an audible or not? Somebody read this for me. Which <laughs> one? This audible or what? What was it? Which one? This is uh, 6 through 10. OK. And now they had gone throughout Frasia and in the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. You heard the word forbidden to now. That was, that was forbidden. Forbidden. After they would come. Forbidden. Go yeah, ahead. They, they do it. After they would come to, what's that word? Mycia? Mycia? Yeah. They are say to go into Bethlehem, but the Spirit suffered them not. So it's, it, they, they're still being led of the Spirit. They wanted to go in places. They call the audible, but he's saying, don't go there. Don't go there. Right. right. OK. And they passed by Messia and, and came down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately he endeavored to go into Macedonia. Assuredly, gathering that the Lord had called us for the preach—I mean, for to preach the gospel unto them. So they were calling audibles, and they were getting redirected as they went. Right. 